Hey guys, so this week I'm gonna bring you some quick and easy ideas for activities that you can do in your live virtual math lessons. Um, so especially those of you that are doing virtual or distance learning right now. Um, I've got more up on my blog about why I do these kinds of activities. So check out the link in my profile if you wanna know more about that. Uh, today's activity is a place value game called The Greatest Number. And I like this game because Okay, so what you need, you need a deck of playing cards. If you don't have cards, you could do a random number generator, but the cards make it more fun for the kids. And then your students need something to write on and um, preferably a marker so that they can't erase and cheat, but as long as they have something to write on and something to write with, they can play the game. Um, and then you need to decide on a size of a number. So I do six digit because that is what they learn in third grade and I want to keep the activity based on what they already know before I introduce something new. Okay so if I'm doing six digit I'm gonna have the kids draw on their paper six lines and I'm gonna make sure they put the comma in the right spot. It's another way to sneak in some place value review and then they're gonna write trash and they're gonna draw two more spots. So this is like their game board. Uh, the first time or two I play this, I definitely model for them, so I will draw it along with them um, so that they can see how to do it. Seriously, my son is so loud playing in his room. <laughs> okay, so what you're going to do to start is you're going to draw a card. Okay, so I got a seven. They have to decide what line they want to put the seven on, and once they put the seven there, they can't change it. They have to leave it. And the goal is to make the greatest number. So they have to think about where, what risks they want to take. Um, so I might put my seven in the 10,000th place. And the first time I play this, I would probably think that out loud for my kids. So I'm going to put the seven in my 10,000th place because I think there might be something that comes up that's larger, but seven's still pretty big. So I don't want to put it too far close to the ones place. So there, I've just hit a ton of vocabulary and reviewed some concepts with um, ordering numbers. My house has gone crazy. So you're gonna keep doing that, keep drawing numbers, um, but they have to put their number before you can draw the next one. So I would have the kids do a thumbs up, um, some sort of signal to show you that they have placed their number and they're ready for the next one. This is why you want to have them do marker so that they can't erase it and cheat, but you know, they're at home, so use what they can. This guy's talking. They also have the option of putting a number in the trash spot if they don't want to use it. So for example, if I draw a two, um, that's a pretty low number and I'm trying to make a large number. So I would probably choose to write the two on one of my trash spots. They can only trash two numbers because you're only gonna draw, if you're doing a six digit number, you're gonna draw eight cards so that they'll have a six digit number and two in the trash. And they, they have to use every number. They can't just decide not to, like if their trash is full, they can't just decide not to put that number somewhere. Um, so they want to put their low numbers in the trash spot. So again, you might want to think this out loud and model it for your kids the first time you're playing. Okay, so let's say that you're done. You've done eight numbers, so they should have a nine-digit number. Nope, sorry. They should have a six-digit number and two numbers in the trash spot. Um, this is when you can throw in some more place value review. So for example, I might tell the kids to... My son. <laughs> he's wild. I might tell the kids to write their number in the chat box if it has a nine in the hundred thousands place. Can you see him? He's a maniac. So you're gonna have your kids type the number in the chat box if it hits certain criteria depending on what you drew. So. If I had a nine that came up, I'm going to ask kids to write it if they had a nine in the hundred thousands place. And then you can call on kids to read their number. They think it's the greatest number. And you want them to read it with correct place value. So you want them to read the number correctly. 
Um, that's really important if you're starting out with place value and you're gonna be teaching kids how to read larger numbers. Make sure they're using that proper math vocabulary. Miles didn't want to be left out. So in this one game, you've reviewed a ton of place value vocabulary. You've also reviewed some concepts on comparing and ordering numbers when they're, which they need to be able to create large numbers. Um, this gets their brains primed so that they've activated all that prior knowledge. They are ready to learn how to read larger numbers or learn the place value names for larger numbers or whatever skill you're working on. But it's all been done in a fun and engaging way which I think is super important with kids trying to learn remotely. Um, it's hard for them to engage in Zoom calls or whatever format your school is using. So anytime you can make it a game, you're gonna hold their attention a lot better. So check back tomorrow and I'll have another quick and easy activity for you for your live lessons and probably as equally chaotic of a setting. It's dinner time.